Hi guys, and uh, just doing a quick uh, impromptu to be invited into the apiary to uh, help do a bee inspection. So I'm just going to uh, suit up and uh, have a go at that. So See you in a minute. This is Pete, the bee dude. And uh, I'm just going to pass the camera to him and he'll show you what, what I look like in my suit. Stand by. So don't worry, I'm putting gloves on because I don't want to get stung, but we're uh, going in over there. Do you want to just show me where we're going, Pete? We're going inside there, so I'll set the camera up in there um, once we're there. I'm just going to light the smoke, huh? And we'll get things going. So we're inside the apron at the moment, guys. And um, Pete's got a smoker down there. You'll see it in a minute. He's going to light the... What does the smoker do? Um, it confuses the bees. The bees signal each other with scent. So there's this pheromone for if they're uh, worried and they think you're going to attack them, they spread that pheromone and other bees pick it up and get more aggressive. And there are various pheromones that they use and, and the smoke just confuses them. And, uh, you know, while they're confused, they're kind of not really knowing what they're doing. And that, that means they're a lot easier to handle. But I think you'll find that most of the time, most of the time the, bee, the bees here are fairly quiet anyway. What you try and do is not keep aggressive strain the bees, you try and keep bees that aren't too aggressive. If they get aggressive, then you requeen them. You know, right. So the genetics change. You go back to non-aggressive bees, but I've been lucky so far actually, all my beehives are really quiet bees, they're really good. Right, I'm just gonna put some Miss Camphus in here, which is elephant grass, which is what I'm using on the smoke. There we go. Right, okay. First thing I want to do is have a look inside this one. This is a new hive. There seems to be a lot of bees, bees. flying around suddenly. <laughs> no, just as they are. I mean, <coughs> try not to stand in front of the hive, it's easier to stand behind it. But if you just go to the side here, you can look down and see these. It seems to be getting very noisy. All they want to do at the moment is bring food back. That's all they're doing. If you get in their way, they won't be happy as long as they can get to the hive and take the food back. So they're collecting nectar and pollen right. at the moment. Can't see much pollen going into this hive, but this hive's only been here a few days, so they're just getting used to it. Now, all I want to do here is top up their feed. Okay. So because it's a new hive and I've just put them in place and they don't know the way around, they're just getting used to it, I put a little bit of extra feed in. And that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to top that feed up. This isn't a permanent roof either. This is a makeshift roof. In here, you can see there are lots of bees. And what they're doing is, I put sugar solution in here, sugar and water. That's all it is. You can see there's some in there. So the bees don't drown in it. They access it from this side. In fact, we're okay with the food. They don't need any more. They're all right for the time being. I'll leave them as they are. So they come up through the hole in the wood there from the hive, uh -huh. and then they uh, they take the food from here. I can actually show you. Definitely the hive. a lot more bees flying around. Show you the hive here. Yep, it's a little bit of propolis. There we are. And obviously those are the frames underneath. That thing you can see with the grating is a queen excluder. Ah, oh, so that stops the queen coming. And it stops the queen yeah. from coming up. And if we put honey supers on, particularly if we put honey boxes on, we don't want the queen coming up and laying eggs in them. So we put a queen excluder on that, keeps her down in the brood box, and she's happy down there. She'll lay about 2,000 eggs a There's day. There's a lot more there. bees around now, isn't there? They're like flying into me and stuff? No. I mean, no. So these ones we're going to have a look in now, the one we're going to have a look in now is uh, an established one. It's been here a year, is it? Yeah, this is the Red Queen hive. Now, Red Queen. Her eggs are making queens in the other three hives. Right, okay. So she's, we've lost a queen and we've had a queenless hive and we've split a hive. So um, she's kept us going really. And it will be her offspring that actually uh, form the nucleus of our, of our bee colony. All of our bee colonies here. Uh, which I really like because the red queen, you know, she's got nice gentle bees. They're really well behaved as you can see here. This is bees feeding. And the sugar syrup. Now I'd put that on about so three, why'd, why'd three you put days sugar ago. Syrup in there, just to... 
because I've because I've split the hive, I've moved her, I've put new new um, frames in. They got a hell of a lot of work to do, and they're a bit upset, and they've got to build up numbers again. Right. So this is this will only be on for about two weeks, and then no more feed then till October. Ah, oh, right. So they go out and get their own. So they'll yeah, they're getting their own as well. But um, this is just in case because if they do happen to run out of food here, mm -hmm. because there aren't enough flying bees, because I've just moved them, then um, obviously they'll starve. So I prefer to put the feed on now, just pop some more in. And the whole idea, the way this is structured with the lid on and everything is to stop the bees from drowning in it. Right. Because they'll get in it and drown, they won't be able to get out. So how do they get out? Is there a hole through it? There's a hole down through the middle. Oh, right. Okay. And they climb up, there's a hole in this board from the hive, they climb up through that into here. Oh, right, okay. So this is a hive without a queen. So they might right. be a bit more frisky. Ah, oh, right, okay. But don't worry about it, it's going to be okay. Stand by for frisky. You notice I'm not using smoke. Uh, I don't use smoke unless I need it. I don't need these. Don't often need it. This is a different kind of feed. This is a solid feed, a fondant. Right. And it's open packet has a hole in it at the bottom. And they'll come up and they'll take from that. Okay. So here's my hive tool. Now the bees tend to glue everything together with something they call propolis, which they get from tree sap. You can hear it cracking. Yeah. That's a, a natural glue and it's got lots of really good properties actually. Some people collect it. Here we go. Wow. Take this off. So how many bees are in there? A lot. A lot. Um, what, 10,000? Probably more now. They're building up, as you can see. I mean, would you, you'd expect these to fly out and start attacking you? Yeah, I'm quite surprised actually, I must admit. I was, uh... Nice gentle bees. If you put your hand across the top, they will fly up and bump you. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Um, you can watch, I'll do it, I'll show you. I'll come up and bump you. No, I'm doing it nice and gentle. Yeah, my finger. Huh? No, she won't do anything. There you are, she bumped me. And she's just done it again. Okay. But no, don't worry, they're okay. They won't be able to sting you through those gloves. So, this is what the beehive looks like. I'll just put a bit of smoke on them and they will fly over. Hang on, I won't put smoke on them, I'll just leave this there. So this is a this is a honey frame, effectively. So I'll take one of these out in the middle and you will get a few flying bees. Wow. And that, now you can see the white, that's there. Mm -hmm. This here is capped honey. Mm -hmm. So that's ready to take, for us to take. Right. They've got their honey down here. And this here, the liquid you could see, is nectar, which isn't quite ready yet, so they haven't capped it. And that there is what's called a play cell, which I'll take out. What's that? Then? It's a queen cell. Oh, right. I'm trying to make a queen, but I, I, you know, they've already got queen cells there. I don't want them making any more. And again, that's a lot of bees. Yeah. And you can see this area is capped. Yeah. So this is about sixty percent capped. So once it's fully white, that's ready to. Once harvest. it's like ninety percent white, then I'll be taking that off. And you can look down here, and you can see the activity inside the hive if you want to. Amazing, isn't it? Wow. And they're all just getting about their business. They're not interested in us, really. As long as we don't pose a threat No, I must admit, I'm surprised. Yep. And we haven't used any smoke. No. Like yes, that. yeah, I always thought you'd need to use smoke. It's not always like this. <laughs> depends on the weather, it depends on the bees. And it depends so on the So at the moment, bees. they're happy bees. At the moment, yeah, this is a happy buzz. Come on, girls. And of course, they are pretty well all girls. they workers. Black things they're fascinated with. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> somewhere around here you might be able to see a, um, a drone, which are really big and fat. They're the male bees, they don't even have a sting. Their only role, they don't collect food, they don't defend the hive. Their only role is to go out and mate with a queen. Yeah, and she'll lay a thousand or two thousand eggs a day, the queen in each hive. There's only one queen in each hive, and she'll lay one thousand or two thousand eggs a day. So they soon build up mm. to 50, 60,000. And um, obviously, a lot of bees are dying off as well. I hear people who give bees sugar water because they're looking a bit ropey in their garden, they're actually dying. Mm. You know, from this hive, 
in the middle of summer, a thousand bees a day are dying, but another two thousand are being born. Ah, oh, right. So uh, that kind of balance. So what's the average out. life of a bee then? About six weeks. Six weeks. Right. Yeah, winter bees are luckier. They last longer. They last through most of the winter. And the queen lasts three or four, maybe five years. At the moment, it's prime swarm season. So there are lots of swarms of bees around, which is a natural thing. Uh, bee colonies, when they get too big, they split. One half will go with the queen and swarm. The other half will stay and bring on a new queen. So uh, it's the way that they split and it's the way they uh, generate new colonies. Uh, so if you see a swarm, um, if you Google it, Google uh, swarm catcher and you'll find a local British Beekeepers Association swarm catcher would be more than happy to come along and take your swarm and rehome it. And it's quite a simple process. Please don't do like somebody did over the weekend when one of our swarm catchers went out. He captured the swarm from a garden, he brought it back and they're all dead in the box because some idiot had sprayed them with, uh, with insecticide raid or something before he got there and basically poisoned the whole colony. No, these, these girls are slow girls. No. So there you go guys, that's the apiary at Venn Farm in uh, Central Park Allotments, Plymouth. And uh, the bees are looking uh, healthy, which means our veg is going to be good. Yep, so, there's always uh, that benefit as well, it's not just that. I'll uh, say bye, don't forget, subscribe. And uh, this will be the second video of today going on, so uh, yeah, plenty to watch, plenty to do in your gardens. Take care.